Hello everybody, my name is Michael and welcome back to Sovereign Thinking. So today we will be reading part 7 of the Rich Dad Poor Dad series by Robert Kiyosaki. So in this series we are finally moving on to lesson number 2 of the lessons that are outlined in this book. That lesson being why teach financial literacy. So beforehand we were reading through the different passages and the different parts and we really explored the full spectrum of the first lesson which was that the rich don't work for money the money work for the rich so in today's part we are finally moving on to the next lesson which is all about financial literacy like i mentioned before before we begin please note that this video is not offering financial advice rather we are reading robert kiyosaki's work for entertainment purposes only where i provide commentary with my own personal thoughts reviewing what we have read so let's begin it's not how much money you make it's how much money you keep in 1990, Mike took over his father's empire and is, in fact, doing a better job than his dad did. We see each other once or twice a year on the golf course. He and his wife are wealthier than you could imagine. Rich Dad's empire is in great hands, and Mike is now grooming his son to take his place, as his dad had groomed us. In 1994, I retired. I was 47, and my wife Kim was 37. Retirement does not mean not working. For us, it means that, barring unforeseen cataclysmic changes, we can work or not work, and our wealth grows automatically, staying ahead of inflation. Our assets are large enough to grow by themselves. It's like planting a tree. You water it for years, and then one day, it doesn't need you anymore. Its roots are implanted deep enough. Then the tree provides shade for your enjoyment. Mike chose to run the empire, and I chose to retire. Most people fail to realize that in life, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. We've all heard stories of lottery winners who are poor, then suddenly rich, and then poor again. They win millions, yet are soon back to where they had started. Or stories of professional athletes who at the age of 24 are earning millions, but are sleeping under a bridge 10 years later. I remember a story of a young basketball player who a year ago had millions. Today, at just 29, he claims his friends, attorney, and accountant took all of his money, and he was forced to work at a car wash for minimum wage. He was fired from the car wash because he refused to take off his championship ring as he was wiping off the cars. His story made national news, and he is appealing his determination, claiming hardship and discrimination. He claims that the ring is all he has left, and if it was stripped away, he'll crumble. I know so many people who became instant millionaires, and while I am glad some people have become richer and richer, I caution them that in the long run, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep, and for how many generations you keep it. So when people ask, where do I get started? Or tell me how to get rich quick, they often are greatly disappointed with my answer. I simply say to them what my rich dad said to me when I was a little kid. If you want to be rich, you need to be financially literate. That idea was drummed into my head every time we were together. As I said, my educated dad stressed the importance of reading books, while my rich dad stressed the need to master financial literacy. As for Mike and me in our adult years, both of our choices were possible because we were taught to pour a strong financial foundation when we were just kids. Accounting is possibly the most confusing, boring subject in the world, but if you want to be rich long term, it could be the most important subject. For Rich Dad, the question was how to take a boring and confusing subject and teach it to kids. The answer he found was to make it simple by teaching it in pictures. My Rich Dad poured a strong financial foundation for Mike and me. Since we were just kids, he created a simple way to teach us. For years, he only drew pictures and used few words. Mike and I understood the simple drawings, the jargon, the movement of money, and then in later years, Rich Dad began adding numbers. Today, Mike has gone on to master much more complex and sophisticated accounting analysis because he had, he, because he had to in order to run his empire. I am not as sophisticated because my empire is smaller, yet we come from the same simple foundation. Rich people acquire assets, 
the poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. It's kind of refreshing that we're finally talking about assets and liabilities and using other financial jargon at this stage in the book. We've already done quite a bit of reading before, so it's kind of nice to kind of ease ourselves into some of these more advanced, um, advanced ideas. Now, I have read a little further ahead in the book, but I just wanted to mention that it is super important that we just kind of stop here and really absorb the message, especially when it came to people inheriting a lot of money and just kind of losing it all. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're a good saver, you'll be able to keep that money. But what this book really does, what Robert Kiyosaki is really great at explaining is that there are other strategies to help that money actually grow. And so we'll start to get into it as we dive deeper into the book. But for now, let's continue reading. Rule number one, you must know the difference between an asset, a liability, and buy assets. If you want to be rich, this is all you need to know. It is rule number one. It is the only rule. This may sound absurdly simple, but most people have no idea how profound this rule is. Most people struggle financially because they do not know the difference between an asset and a liability. Rich people acquire assets. The poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets, said Rich Dad. When Rich Dad explained this to Mike and me, we thought he was kidding. Here we were, nearly teenagers, waiting for the secret to getting rich, and this was his answer. It was so simple that we stopped for a long time to think about it. What is an asset? asked Mike. Don't worry right now, said Rich Dad. Just let the idea sink in. If you can comprehend the simplicity, your life will have a plan and be financially easy. It is simple. That is why the idea is missed. You mean all we need to know is what an asset is, acquire them, and we'll be rich, I asked. Rich Dad nodded his head. It's that simple. If it's that simple, how come everyone is not rich, I asked. Rich Dad smiled because people do not know the difference between an asset and a liability. I remember asking, how could adults be so misguided? If it is that simple, if it is that important, why would everyone not want to find out? It took Rich Dad only a few minutes to explain what assets and liabilities were. So what causes the confusion? How could something be so simple be so screwed up? Why would someone buy an asset that was really a liability? The answer is found in basic education. An asset puts money in my pocket. A liability takes money out of my pocket. To us young boys, Rich Dad said, what defines an asset are not words, but numbers. And if you can't read the numbers, you can't tell an asset from a hole in the ground. In accounting, Rich Dad would say, it's not the numbers, but what the numbers are telling you. It's just like words. It's not the words, but the story the words are telling you. If you want to be rich, you've got to read and understand numbers. If I heard that once, I heard it a thousand times from my rich dad. And I also heard the rich acquire assets and the poor and middle acquire liabilities. All right, so before you panic and think that I'm really reading an accounting book here, I can assure you that I'm not. This is more so about financial literacy than anything else, especially for lesson two here. And the purpose of reading this book and for starting this series is to really put the power back into everyday people's lives. And a lot of that will come with the control of money and how to handle it. Anyways, I wanted to also pause here for a minute to really reiterate that what I think is really profound here is that an asset puts cash into your pocket and a liability takes cash out of your pocket. Now, I'm going to put some diagrams up on the screen and what you can see from here with these diagrams is just kind of how that works and how the middle class and the poor that think they have an asset is actually a liability that's really taking money out of their pocket. So that helps to really 
give a visual on how to explain uh, that aspect of what Robert Kiyosaki is educating us here in this book. So I'm going to keep those images up on the screen for you to review as we read out with our final passage. So let's continue doing that. An asset is something that puts money in my pocket, whether I work or not. A liability is something that takes money out of my pocket. This is really all you need to know. If you want to be rich, simply spend your life buying or building assets. If you want to be poor or middle class, spend your life buying liabilities. Illiteracy, both in words and numbers, is the foundation of financial struggle. If people are having difficulties financially, there is something that they don't understand, either in words or numbers. The rich are rich because they are more literate in different areas than people who struggle financially. So if you want to be rich and maintain your wealth, it's important to be financially literate in words as well as in numbers. Numbers alone mean little, just as words out of context mean little. It's the story that counts. In financial reporting, reading numbers is looking for the plot, the story of where the cash is flowing. In 80% of most families, the financial story paints a picture of hard work to get ahead. However, this effort is for naught because they spend their lives buying liabilities instead of assets. We're going to stop it here today. Assets and Liabilities, as explained by Robert Kiyosaki in the Rich Dad Poor Dad book, is already something that is significant enough just to wrap our heads around for one day. I'm sure that you are already thinking about the different assets that you think are liabilities, or the liabilities and expenses that would show up and be categorized in the diagrams that I have left on the screen. So I'm sure you're already thinking that way, and I will be doing a journal exercise that actually tackles this specifically, so you can look out for that this Friday. On Wednesday's read-through, we will be covering financial problems and really how a sudden influx of cash can and really accentuate someone's financial literacy or illiteracy in some cases. So we'll really start to dive deep into examples of to how those kind of situations really come about and how financial literacy can help to save the day. But for now, I have listed the Rich Dad Poor Dad book in the description box below if you wanted to pick it up for yourself. And as always, please just take what vibes with you, leave what doesn't, and just take it one day at a time. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.